Help support the companies that support our community. So we're going to focus on the foot of the bowl today. So I found this piece. I have no idea. It must have been a demo piece or I was teaching something. But it's a piece of myrtle wood. I even cut the tenon off for some reason, but it's like super thick. So we're going to put it back on the lathe and return it and use it for this project. So I'm just going to make a tenon down on the bottom of it here so I can re-chuck it. It's a beautiful piece of myrtle wood. Got some great color to it. So I'm just truing up a little bit of the bottom and putting a tenon on it. So I get asked all the time, what chuck am I using in the videos? It's an easy wood chuck and these are the coal jaws for it. And they go in and come out the same way as the rest of the jaws. There's just a little pin in there that releases them. It doesn't matter which position you go in, it, it, it all works, works together. And then I'm going to switch back over to the smaller jaws to grab, grab the actual tenon that I just made. And so with these two, they just slide right in, lock right into it. They're not numbered, it doesn't matter which, which slot they go in. So I'm going to remount this back onto the lathe using the chuck. And then I'm going to start shaping the outside of it. And with that, I have it at about, about uh, 2,000 RPMs and I'm using a spindle gouge. So it's a little bit out of round. So I'm just trying to clean it up and refine the shape on a little bit. So what I'm, what I'm looking for is something that flows nice, you know, just around the corners, um, down to the bottom of it. Anytime you're doing, you know, a lidded box or a bowl or a vase or anything, just a nice, smooth, even curve is, is what looks, looks best. So I'm just kind of cleaning everything up. The rim on this is way too big and I'll, I'll bring that down here in a minute, but I'm just trying to refine the, the shape of it. And so with this one, I'm going to create a little, little lip on the bottom of it so that it looks like it's floating off of the, off of the table. So when I work on the bottom of it, I'm just trying to get that curve that goes down nice and smooth and flows right down into the table or, or shelf or whatever you, whatever you're putting it on. After I got the lip all cut down, and even with this, I'm I'm looking at the side of it too to make sure it looks right as I'm bringing that lip down to make sure it flows nice. Then I'm going to take the number one hauler and clean out the inside of it. It was pretty thick. Like I said, I can't remember what when I did this bowl or what it was for. I, I want to say it was like for a demonstration or something, but I don't know why it would have, I would have left it so thick for that, but it had been sitting over in a pile for quite a while, so it's going to work out perfect for this one. So I'm just bringing the wall thickness down um, with the number one hollower and cleaning it all up. After I got it all cleaned up on the inside, I measured the depth of it and then went back to the outside to clean up the bottom. So you'll see I don't go all the way down to the tenon because it doesn't go down that far. And so what I'm trying to do here is just have that, that curve go right around down into the bottom of it so, so it looks nice. So I'm just kind of taking this nice and slow and trying to create that nice, nice arc down in there. Once I got that done, I went ahead and sanded the inside of it and ran through all the grits here. I haven't put any oil on it and I, I don't on this project because I'm going to actually color the bottom of the bowl a little bit. So I just went through all the grits, sanded it all up, and then we'll put the oil on when we are all done. So now I'm going to mount it back in the, Jacob, or the coal jaws. So I just pop the jaws out and then again just 
Put the cold jaws right in there. They just slide right in and lock, lock in place. And I put the paper towel on there just to protect the lip a little bit and just kind of take off anything that's going to flap around too much. Brought the tail stock back up and turned off the foot. So again with this, when I'm turning this material away, once I get down there to, to the final shape and the final cuts, again, I'm just keeping an eye on it to make sure it, it flows around the corner nicely. So to give it that illusion that it's sitting off of the off of the table, I'm going to create another foot on the inside of that that outer ring there, and the bowl's going to sit on it, but it's just barely going to sit off of the table, so that there'll be a more a little more of a shadow than there would normally, because you'd be able to see because it's a lighter color wood too. You'll be able to see right when it, it hits on the table. This will create a little bit of a shadow underneath it. So I'm just creating a little ring and it's not very much, maybe just over a sixteenth or so. So it'll hover hover off the off the bottom. After I got all of that done, I went ahead and ran through all of the grits again, sanded it right back up, and then I will grab the the fiber castle pins so these are the pins for the basket illusion so they're archival pins they work fantastic on wood and they won't won't bleed on you and they work great so i'm just going to go ahead and color that in if it was a darker wood like walnut you probably wouldn't need to do this it's already going to create that little shadow but because this well, the myrtle wood is a little bit lighter i thought it'd be a good idea to color it so I just went around here and colored in that whole little lip and just maybe quarter inch. I went went from the out, that's the outside of it right there and I went in about a quarter of an inch. So that even when I put the oil on, it'll be much darker than the outside of it. There we go. I have all of the oil on. It is just a beautiful piece of myrtle wood. So there is the bottom of it with the oil on it. So I did that in in the black so that when you are looking at it from the side, you can't see any any bit of the light colored wood. So if you're using something like a walnut, you probably wouldn't have to do that. I just kind of wanted to try it, try it with this because it is a light colored wood. So looking at it from the side, it just looks like there's a, just a shadow underneath it. So it's a great way to just have it flow right in right into whatever it's sitting on instead of seeing seeing the point the point of contact. So the bowl is uh, six and a half inches in diameter across here and four inches tall. And again, I have no idea what I was doing when I when I first turned it. It must have been for a demo or something. But it was uh, yeah. And I I even like went through the whole process of making it with taking the tenon off and everything. But uh, yeah. Anyway, I fixed it. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece of wood. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, I will be at the Woodcraft in Tigard, Oregon on the 9th of December. And all the turning blanks are 25% off. So please stop by and say hi and get a great deal. All right, till next week. Take care. Bye.